Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today and we're going to be creating an hand embroidery project. So I'm going to go through this as if you were a very basic beginner who had never done hand embroidery before and I'm going to link this particular pattern and design. This top is one of my patterns and then the embroidery pattern was designed to go with it. I'm going to put all of these links down below so that you'll have all of that information. talking about embroidery tools. So first I've got the fabric that I'm going to embroider this sample on. This is just a plain piece of muslin because it's going to be easier for you to see on camera what I'm doing. But you can embroider on pretty much any fabric. If it is something like this rayon that I'm wearing, you might want to put interfacing to keep the fabric stable and so that it won't stretch out the wrong way when you hoop it. And the hoop is our next supply. So this one here is a little bit of a fancier hoop because it has this ridge on it that gets the fabric really tight on your hoop. This is going to be a little more expensive, but the wooden hoops that you see very inexpensively at the craft store, those work just fine. I like to transfer my designs with this um, disappearing ink or washable ink pen and um, I've got the design printed out right here and then I've got embroidery floss these usually come in six strands like this and then I've got an embroidery needle now embroidery needles are a little bit different than regular hand sewing needles because they're a little bit thicker and the eye of the needle the hole that it, the thread goes through is a little bit bigger so that um, you can get the thread through so let's start by talking about how to transfer the design onto the fabric. So there are a few ways you can do this. There are things that you can do where um, you can trace on the actual design and then you can like iron transfer it, um, but that's usually permanent. There are some pens that are permanent. Um, I like this one the best. The disappearing ink often disappears before I can actually finish my embroidery design. So um, I actually like this Mark Be Gone here and this washes out with water. Like you just add water and it washes out. It's what I used on this top. Um, you do want to test it on a little scrap of your fabric before you use it because there are a few fabrics that I've heard that it won't wash out of. I've never actually had that problem myself. but. So then what I like to do is I like to position my design and I just use the marker and I trace it. Now when I'm tracing, I don't necessarily trace every detail. So for like these flowers, I just kind of trace the outlines of them. And by the way, if you have trouble seeing what your design is through whatever fabric you're using, you can put this up against a window to trace it. Or another idea is if you have one of those plastic rubber tubs and you have some Christmas lights, you can stick some Christmas lights underneath, you put your plastic tub on top, and then you've got like a really inexpensive light box that you can use. If you have an actual light box, you can use those as well. All of those are great options. So what I do is I just transfer kind of the edges of the design traced out pretty loosely. I like mine to be kind of handmade um, looking, otherwise why do the hand embroidery? You just choose a machine embroidery pattern. So there's a couple of um, parts of the design. I'm not going to trace the whole thing here because I don't need to show you every single thing. Let me trace this line here too because that will be something I'm going to show you. Alright, so there's a couple elements of the design and what you're going to do after you've traced out the whole thing is you're going to hoop your design. So you start by loosening up your hoop and you want to take the inner ring of the hoop, you want to put the design on top and then you want to put the outer hoop over it. It helps to do this on a flat surface and then because mine has a ridge, there we go, I pull the hoop down just until that ridge is covered. Then you want to make sure that your threads are going perpendicular to each other. You don't want any threads like getting pulled out of line and like curving off one side. So make sure everything's straight 
and then I like to tighten the hoop up a little bit and kind of pull around the edges to get out any wrinkles to make sure that my fabric is in there tightly. And then I tighten the knob on my hoop all the way. Again, when you're pulling this, you want your fabric to be tight, but you don't want to warp the fabric. You don't want to pull it out of alignment or off grain. Let's take a look at the thread here. So embroidery thread comes in, there we go, comes in six strand pieces. And what that means is that when you unwind the thread, if you look closely at the ends, there are actually six little threads there. So um, what I like to do is kind of pull out two threads and then kind of squish the other four threads or other two threads or however many until I can hold both ends and then pull them apart so that I've got just my two threads to work with. Using two threads at a time is pretty typical for embroidery designs, but of course, if you've got different instructions to use one thread or to use three threads, you can do that. I like to lick or you can use beeswax to the two ends of the thread together so that makes it easier to thread through your embroidery needle and then knot it. All right, once you've got your needle threaded, we can start doing some of these designs. So, the first one I'm going to do, this is called a back stitch. And you're going to start on one end of your design, bring the needle up, and just take it back down through on the line. Now you can't do that on the next stitch because you would be coming up through the same hole and you would cause your design to come out. Um, you just pull the thread right back out. So what you do is you go a little further down and you pull the thread through and then you go back down through your previous hole. And you're just going to do that all along the line you drew. This is great to outline designs, to do things like stems, like what I'm doing here. So I'm going to knot my thread here. And to do that, you just do a typical hand sewing knot where you're making a loop, twist it around the thread, and then cut. Tie a new knot, and I'm going to show you how to do a French knot. Alright, so let's look at how to do a French knot. That's what this part of the design indicates. When there's those little dots, they're supposed to be a French knot. So, bring your needle up through and then you're going to wrap your thread around your needle a few times. I like to do six, that's just the number that I like. So three, four, five, six. And then you want to take your needle back down right next to where you came up and you want to hold all of that thread tightly as you pull through it. And there you go. This creates this little raised bumpy knot and that's a great detail. It's also good sometimes to create the impression of leaves if you do a bunch of these together. Or it can be good for the center of a flower if you do a bunch of them together again. Finally, let's look at how to do a satin stitch. That's what I'm going to use for these flowers. So when I do a flower like this, you could satin stitch all the way around. But what I like to do is kind of radiate my stitches out like a petal. So I take several stitches and I go from like the edge of each petal almost to the center on this design because I leave a little gap in the middle and then that way you can see where the center of the flower is supposed to be. And what these stitches do at first is they just kind of help me as I'm going around satin stitching in a minute to space out to my stitches. So now that I've got kind of my guidelines and I know where my center is, I'm going to come up through the center 
and I want to go back down right next to the stitch that I placed before. And then I just want to keep repeating that, and that's a satin stitch. Now the trick to a satin stitch is you always have to come up on the other end so it forms the satin stitch on the front and on the back of the fabric. It is tempting to try sometimes to save thread by coming up next to your stitch. And what that does is it's going to create little gaps and it's not going to totally fill in your shape with these satin stitches. So that's how you do a satin stitch. You would just continue to do those around the flower until the flower is entirely filled in like these on my shirt here. And that's it for this design. Those are the basic stitches that you'd use. The back stitch, the satin stitch, and the French knot. Those are all put together and then that's how you get this.